Aloha! Welcome to the Savvy Chick Show. Thanks so much for coming back. I've been away in Canada, so for those of you who've been watching, thank you to everyone who I've interviewed while being away and for the viewers for continuing to watch. Um, so today, it's uh, back in the studio. Very exciting here in Honolulu in Hawaii at the Think Tech Hawaii studio. And I have a very special guest who, um, well now I guess we're a bit of the Savvy Chick sort of radio show podcast because we're not able to get this guest on Skype. But it's Lisa Bain. Now she is a wellness uh, wellness coach, a yoga instructor, and she's also the founder of Illuminaire Yoga all the way from Sydney, Australia. And she's very passionate about young women and teens and girls just as I am. And we're very excited to do this episode on the Savvy Chicks Life Style School. Welcome, Lisa. Aloha. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you over there? What's the weather like in Sydney? Um, it is. Um, oh, you're in Melbourne. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's in Melbourne. <laughs> the sun hasn't quite come up yet here. Oh, yes, because it's not even 7 a.m. over in Melbourne. Yep. But yes, it is. The birds are just starting to chirp. Very, very good. Well, what a great way to start the day. We're going to be talking about those life skills that they don't necessarily teach you in school, and that's hence lifestyle and creating a lifestyle that inspires you so that it's not don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. It's you can do this, and if you do this, you can do even more. And that's why Lisa's actually come up with some great ideas of how to create a savvy lifestyle school, and together we're working on that. So I'd love you to start with, uh, you know, what, what don't they teach you in school, Lisa? I or think most one schools. of the first things um, is finances. Um, you know, they're taught basic maths or maths that generally um, can't be used once they finish school. Um, so it's about, I guess, them empowering themselves and going, okay, you know, I want to go and get a loan. I want to go and get a personal loan. I want to go and get a mortgage. Um, I've got some savings. How do I best get... Um, you know, value out of putting my money into the bank and getting a really good return on interest rate. Also, you know, getting a car loan, um, buying a house, you know, how much money do I need? How much do I need to, you know, put down as a deposit to make sure that, you know, that I don't have to pay something like mortgage insurance. So these are all things that um, I think I would really like to educate girls on and just so that when it, when it does come to that point in life, um, they don't necessarily need, you know, a man around <laughs> to um, to help them make those decisions. And what what age do you think is a good age to start looking into these types of things, or to start sort of being mindful about about your finances? Yeah, I definitely think you know, girls these days they're starting jobs at like fifteen, almost sixteen. So, you know. What, what do we do with a portion? I mean, my daughter just got her first paycheck, you know, $80. And I said, okay, well, let's, um, let's look to see what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do with this. Maybe set up another bank account so that you can put maybe, you know, half the money into the bank account. And then you've got, you know, you can, you can actually spend and feel like, yay, I worked and I can, you know, I can go and buy something, but maybe just pop a little bit of way. And then we started talking about, you know, what, what is she gonna save for? So I think definitely from the ages of, of 16, um, with our children and then obviously when they get a full-time job or when you know the, the money sort of starts coming in um, about definitely setting up a goal and a plan of, of where they want to be and what they want to do or it might be just putting the money away for traveling. Yes traveling traveling is a great one I think that that's something for for girls and young women to relate to because they sort of are inspired to travel and want to travel and that's something that we've spoken up about before traveling I mean yeah. I traveled when I finished high school I ended up that's when I went to Australia and went to England, but a lot of girls don't even know, you know, how to do it or what to do it. And I think that's another one of the important points that you were wanting to discuss. What is it about travel, Lisa, that, um, that you think that they should be teaching in schools or if they're not teaching it in schools, just so that girls have access to this sort of information? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I definitely think they need to learn just how to book a flight. Um, you know, often we, we send them off to a travel agent and, you know, get them to do it all for them. But let's get them online. Let's get them looking at flights. Some, you know, a website like Expedia that will give you, you know, if you want to go to London, it will give you 10 different options of 10 different airlines that are going to London and different stopovers. Um, 
we definitely need to um, they definitely need to be talking to their bank before they go. So all that hard earned money that they that they popped in the bank, they definitely need to be securing that and um, making sure that their bank knows so that the bank doesn't start closing their accounts, thinking you know someone in London is um, is you know hacking hacking this account. <laughs> um, also about using their FPOS card, so you don't necessarily have to carry a large amount of cash around with you. Um, the other thing is um, just knowing where you're going. So doing a little bit of research and knowing you're connecting flights. I mean, many, um, as you probably know, when you've travelled, many cities have different airports. So if you allow, you know, an hour for a connecting flight, but you have to jump to, over to another airport, it could be, um, you know, it could be a matter of missing a plane. So, yeah, um, they're, probably, they're probably my main tips. And I mean, like, you love traveling. You've well, probably had some experience with travel. Definitely. And I think even things as simple as, and I actually have an experience with this, my, my brother had when he was 18, which is a few years ago now, he went to Europe and didn't yeah. have travel insurance and ended up basically um, diving and smashing the whole side of his face and didn't have travel insurance. Yes. So that's, you know, those are things yes, that you also don't think about. You know, it's exciting. You want to go on mm. a trip or you want to do what you want to do, but at the same time, there's things like travel insurance and, I mean, it's not my expertise, but these are things that I've had to learn and visas for countries and... Correct. Just so that there's yep. no surprises when you get to the airport or, or disappointments and also just so you can feel more secure. Like in each country, there's a line that you can call if you run into any issues and whatnot. So, and also some countries aren't that safe to travel in. So these are, you know, they seem minor, yeah. but they're actual... Um, yeah. yeah, and that's where I definitely um, encourage them to do their research first. Um, also on just having the right appropriate clothing. I mean, we all know that the Middle East has Ramadan and, you know, let's make sure that we're following and respecting what their religious beliefs are about, you know, not eating in public and about covering up our shoulders. I mean, there's a lot of Asian countries and temples and churches and we just want to make sure that we're covered up and we're respecting, um, you know, respecting their um, place of, of, um, of, of being, yeah. Yeah, we're where they are. And I think that, that what you and I both share in this is the fact that it is a great thing to travel. I graduated high school, you know, I was 18 years old. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to study. And I've said this before, I went to the guidance counselors. I was trying to explain advertising marketing. Yes. And they, they said yes. my maths weren't good enough. And so I decided to travel. I knew I'd eventually study. And that was the point that I made the decision to go to Australia. Uh, and just to know that it's not a bad thing to take time to travel. I mean, parents might be watching this saying, oh my gosh, no, make sure, you know, kids finish school and go to university. But I've turned out just fine. And there's a lot of people that don't even go to university yes. and are very successful. So I think that's something if you're, you know, if you're a young woman watching this or you're a parent of a young woman watching this, it's not necessarily a bad thing to take a year to explore and, and have a look around such as long as you do it in a responsible way. and you know, make sure everyone's aware of where you yeah. are and whatnot. And and I um, travelled to Malaysia and one day I came in and there was a little bookmark on my pillow and the bookmark's quote sticks with me forever. It says, um, the best way to get a perspective of where you are is to get as far away as it, as far away from it as possible. So I think sometimes we do have to step away to really know what we want. Definitely, I, I, um, I couldn't mm. agree more with that. I, you know, this show is, is, we could go on for days with, with, you know, travel and with finance like we've started off with, but I just love to yes. run through yes. more of the points because there will be a Savvy Chicks Lifestyle School coming soon enough. Lisa and I are working on this. Yes. And Lisa's a, she's a great, you know, it's great to get together and, and this is probably one of the points we'll discuss later in, um, you know, with like-minded people who, love what you love, but also have their own skills. So um, what's another point yes. from there, Lisa? Um, I think um, we also need to talk about positive influences. So we go through childhood, you know, idolizing, you know, different people. And then once we sort of get to, you know, 18, who really resonates with us? You know, try and find that tribe, try and find those, those people um, that group of people, whether it's online or whether it's, um, you know, in your community that you really resonate with and you feel like they're on a similar journey to you and whether it's, um, you know, a speaker or an educator or um, an author, um, I'd really encourage people to step out and um, contact these people and say, 
you know, I've got a question for you. I love this passage in your book and start making comments on their Facebook page and um, comment to them on Twitter because every time I reach out to someone, I 99% of the time will get a, um, will get a comment back. Um, I private message, you know, authors and... You know, these people are just, that they just want to help. I mean, just like you and I, um, they just want to, they just want to help the next person to reach their dreams and, um, yeah, just reach out and have some conversations with them. I think that what, I mean, what you're saying there is basically, it's also um, the authenticity of the connection because if you're reaching out to someone yes. that you are very inspired by, they'll feel that and I think yes. that connection is what has them replying because if it was someone that you had told to reach out to, but it wasn't a genuine connection, they might not Correct. hear back. So I think the important thing here is to make sure if you're reaching out to someone, it's someone that you really want to connect with, not because you think it's going to get you to the next place. Someone that you genuinely, I mean, it will get you to the next place, don't get me wrong, but someone that you genuinely are mm. inspired by because that can be felt and you can't fake a, a connection like that. So I think that's a really important point. And, and as you said, everyone you've reached out to, and yeah. similar for me, everyone I've ever reached out to, even if they were as high as yes. the sky, has... Um, has pretty much come back to me and I think that that's, you know, knowing yeah. what you want from them and what they are, have to bring and um, just connecting those yep. dots, I suppose. Yeah, and you had a you had a beautiful connection with Liz Gilbert when we were in Sydney and that was just something that, you know, it wasn't, that, that was a message for you, but she, she gave a message to the audience. So sometimes by us stepping out and asking a question, we're not just getting the answer for ourselves, we're getting the answer for a lot of other people. That was such a special experience, and I can't thank you and my friend Mel enough for getting yes. me out there. For those of you who know Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, basically I decided that I was going to get up and ask a question, which I don't normally, and I went to a microphone, and there had already been people full on the other microphones, and she just pointed at and picked me, and I said, you know, I have this two, I'm caught in two worlds. I want to inspire girls to follow their dreams, hence this, as well as I love to help all people with wellness and just to create and lead healthy lifestyles. And what she said to me yeah. is, stop trying to help people and do what you love instead. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that's what we're doing right now. This is, I, I couldn't do yeah. anything more that I love than being in the studio, chatting, interviewing, inspiring people, meeting great people and just Correct. doing the wellness myself. So that was great advice. And what was even funnier yeah. is when you, caught, when you caught up with her and a while later and she remembered that exact question. <laughs> Twelve months later, I said to her, "Do you remember asking my girl? Do you remember my girlfriend asking her um, you this question?" She said, "Oh my goodness, yes, I thought about that when I went back to the hotel room." So yeah, she um, she said, "You know, I, I you know that was my first instinct to say." And I said, "No, you said exactly the right thing." And she's she's a beautiful lady. And one thing that she says is, "Follow your curiosity," um, you know, because you just don't know where it will take you. And that's one, um, you know, I love her books and I love what she does and. Um, she really, she actually says, you know, a lot of a lot of the time we say, you know, try and find your passion, you know, for you know, follow your passion, watch your passion, and then she says, you know, sometimes people might not have, you know, they might not have that particular thing yet, so maybe follow your curiosity, um, and and what interests you and what sort of, um, you know. Um, dragging you towards, you know, like a magnet, like towards something, and then. Um, and then see, see what happens. I think, yeah, that's follow, following know. what lights you up. And uh, you did it yourself when you decided to go out and pursue yoga and you're passionate about teens and you have a daughter yourself and, and that's just keeps yes. unfolding and now you're in schools and I, I mean, you've got the great yes. website there and you're opening up to more things and opportunities and even what we're connecting on and doing together. It's pretty, it's just that you following that thing that you loved and now it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah, and we just have to um, empower teens and let them know that they don't always have to um, follow the pack. You know, the pack is, I mean, if that's where you want to go, go with them. But there might be a different pack and it might be slightly smaller and, you know, um, not as popular. But, but you know, that goes into personal branding, which is obviously a big thing of yours, um, is, you know, personal branding. Yes, personal brand. I'm very excited to talk about that, and I, I know in a lot of segments I actually touch on it, but in the next segments, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll start the next sure. segment uh, and talk about personal branding. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon on the Savvy Chick Show. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me live every other Monday at 4 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. 
And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha everyone, I'm Maria Mera and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show Viva Hawaii on ThinTech Hawaii every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner and I'm fortunate to be able to host Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join in with us every Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m to see the interesting people we have to share with you their information. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to the Savvy Chick Show. We're here live in the Honolulu studio interviewing a Skype guest, Lisa Main, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. And we're talking about Savvy Lifestyle School. school. So it's for Savvy Chicks. And Lisa knows all about Savvy Chicks. She's got a teenage daughter herself. She's very passionate about young women and girls. And the first segment, we covered a lot of the life skills that you don't learn in school, which we're going to continue on. And we're going to start with personal branding because it's a particular favorite of mine. And Lisa knows how important this is as well. So what are your thoughts on personal branding, Lisa? Um, yeah, I think, um, I think with personal branding, it's about stepping into um, your authentic self. So giving, giving what you authentically have to offer opposed to... Um, as we said, just as, you know, we were going to the break, just following uh, following everyone else, what everyone else is doing. Um, you know, how many people would think about moving to Hawaii and starting their own TV show? <laughs> no, I, not quite starting, but I did get a bit of a, a leg up there with Think Tech Hawaii. But the, what, yeah. what is true about that, though, is that I actually had the intention and I was pursuing a show without having a show to pursue. So I think that that was, yes. it was one of those internal yes. things that I actually pursued when I couldn't see anything. And that's why I'm always a believer and believe it until you see it, not see it and then believe it. Because I mean, when I was in Sydney, Australia, all I wanted was a show, but there was no way, well, not no way, but it was becoming very challenging. And then arriving here in Hawaii and being able to have this opportunity is just, um, but that's because I followed my own yeah. internal dialogue. and. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, definitely. And that's something that we do in yoga. We always set an intention before we, um, before we start the class. Because if you don't know where you're going, um, you know, what, what, what's going to... You, you, just, you, do, you don't know what the path is going to look like. So that's, you know, that's even one of my rituals every morning is to visualise what I want my life to be. And you've obviously done that with, that, with um, your TV show as well. Um, the other thing I love about personal branding is we can make it into a business. So you don't have to wait until you're, you know, in your mid-20s and, you know, to have all this experience before you start your own, your own business. So I guess just a couple of tips is just to find out, you know, what are you passionate about? You know, do you love yoga? Do you love horses, dogs? Do you love traveling? Do you love hiking and getting outdoors? And how do we... Um, how do we put this into a business so we could, you know, start a, an Instagram account or we could start an, an e-book and get some followers from there. And from there, you can start getting ad people advertising on your page. So I would definitely look at doing, um, you know, YouTube um, tutorials. Um, there's free e-books out there. And there is a lot of, there's a lot of literature out there that, is also very cheap as well. So you don't necessarily have to go and spend thousands of dollars on a, on a business course to, um, to start a business. And definitely when you're 18, let's, let's look at the options of network marketing. I mean, we've got um, Richard Branson and Robert Kozowski and um, Bill Gates all saying that they wish they had of um, become part of a network company, um, you know, in their 20s. That's why even now, I mean... They would even now in, in my 20s, <laughs> not quite have decided yeah. to, to do one as well. Because, I mean, the more revenue streams that you could have, the, the better, I suppose. So if you can start that young, and even with the young girls with their businesses, they can start as young as 10. There's Club Kidpreneur in Sydney or in Austra all around Australia, and they start doing businesses when they're young. But even here, um, very soon we'll have a couple of young girls who have their own businesses, and they're creating everything from earrings to T-shirts and all different types of, you know, creative yep. crafts and whatnot and to be able to sell those and create a brand and 
create a brand around them. So that'll be part of Mission Savvy Chicks and, and definitely will take yes, you on definitely. the journey of what yeah. it is to personal, personal brand. And I believe that the, your personal brand should just be an extension of who you are um, and should be a reflection of who you are. And that that's goes to your career path and everything because there's no sense in trying to be something way over there that you're not when you can just be yourself and then just have your career or your job or whatever yeah. it is be a reflection. But not that's not to discredit if you were doing a part-time job and it doesn't seem like you. I mean, I worked at Burger King, um, Hungry Jacks in Australia, it's called, when I was 15. I mean, that's not an exact extension of who I am, but at the time it turned me a, taught me a lot of life skills that uh, were very relevant. So um, that's and, also important and to that know. Sort of leads, yeah, and that leads into something that um, I think you and I have chatted a, a lot about before is about, um, you know, I'm a parent and you're just about to become a parent. And how can we as parents um, set examples for our children? Um, because, you know, we think, oh, you know, we're going to be out late tonight and we're not going to see the kids because we have to go and have this meeting or do this. Well, the kids are going to, being a good example to your children, they're going to remember that. They're going to go, well, hang on, mum, you know, she, she took a little bit of a leap of faith and... You know, she networked and she did this and she did that to succeed. And and that's just a really good example. Um, I also really encourage, um, you know, keeping that connection with your team. So, you know, just saying, come on, let's jump in the car. We're going to go for a walk um, down the beach or, you know, into nature. Um, I took Hayley to a music festival last year. So um, she also brought, brought a, um, a friend with her. And they just said it was one of the best days of their life. They couldn't believe the beautiful community. So it's about us introducing them to these options and saying you don't have to lead down the path of, you know, taking drugs and, and doing alcohol. There's definitely other options out there that can bring you internal um, joy, um, even to the point where take your kids to work with you. I think we need to keep that connection. You know, look where we work. Look how, look what we do. This is where we come every day. Um, imagine being your daughter and and, um, and coming in to work with you. That would be amazing. She'll be in the <laughs> studio next year. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I completely agree with you. And I also want to add on to that. For girls or young women watching today, do you can do this for your mums as well. You know, sometimes your mums might be caught up in, in their own thing and not even realize that they're not feeling inspired. So by you initiating that walk with your mum or that festival yes. with your mum or something like that, you might actually even help her or, you know, bring her to a better place. I mean, sometimes you think, oh, mum's grouchy, mum's this, mum's that. Well, sometimes if you actually bring that light, you can, you can change the whole way she's feeling. And, um, yeah, so feel free to initiate things with your moms, even though it doesn't seem cool, you'd, you'd be uh, pretty surprised on how much it'll improve your relationship as well as allowing you to do more things you want because we all know that when there's a good relationship and connection, you can kind of get more of what you want. Just saying, it's life yes. in general. Yes. <laughs> I'm a people yeah, person. A there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah. you know, it, it can go both ways. And I guess what I'm saying there is it's a really important mother-daughter relationship. And for those of you who might not have a relationship or connection with your mother, feel free to reach out to someone else. I mean, I grew up without a father, but then I found men male mentors. So um, it, just because you don't have one or perhaps your mom's not the best role model for you, um, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to maybe one of your friend's parents, perhaps, if, if, that's, if that needs to be there. Just so you can have a good influence in your life uh, as a parent role model. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've actually sort of um, unofficially adopted a few um, girls in their 20s that have become, um, you know, sort of older sisters to Hayley. And I love that she can contact, you know, keep that contact and that communication with them. Because sometimes, you know, mum isn't the one that you want to have that answer from. Um, it, they might give exactly the same answer, but they just don't want it coming from their mum. <laughs> That's why when I do speaking at schools, and I, it came out just really naturally one time, but now I actually say it in my speeches, is basically I want to be your big, you know, a big sister to you. And that's myself, you know, Chantel Seville, the savvy chick to be a big sister to all those young women and girls out there so that they feel that I'm not their mom and I'm not their teacher and I'm not anyone who's trying to boss yes. them around. I just really genuinely want what's best for them and that's always to be themselves and follow what's true to them and 
you know, it's be yourself, believe in yourself, follow your dreams. And I think when you're really focused on that, that focus can be so strong that it'll pull you into so much inspiration that you're not even worried about the other things that you're told not to do. Because who wants to be told not yeah. what to do at the end of the day? I mean, sometimes when it comes to certain things, like what shouldn't I do? And then the rest is open. But most of the time, it's nice to know what you can do, where your options are, what yeah. you can aspire to, and hence the whole reason for Savvy Chicks in the show. So those are, those are uh, pretty important points. Yeah. What, what other yes, points do you have um, there, Elise? Um, well, one of my, um, I guess, favourites is about wellness. So, um... That's why you created I the business. <laughs> Pardon? That's why you created your business. Yes, you're so passionate yes. about wellness. Um, and, I, and that's sort of leveraged from my having my... doing yoga when I was pregnant with my daughter. So... Someone just invited me along and I went, okay, I'll come and do that. Um, I was previously a dancer, so I thought, oh, I can do this. And I just found it so natural, but also very calming as well. So uh, I love being able to take that to schools and giving that to the children. And I mean, I was you know, at a school the other day teaching you 12 and yoga is about checking in as well. And so often with teens, they don't check in with themselves. They, they're asking their friends how they're okay or whatever, but they're not checking in and saying, okay, well, how do I feel today? And, and then when you do something like a walk with your mum or your friend, okay, well, how do I feel now? Okay, well, well you know, I feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit of a shift happening. So it's knowing that you do have that time to be able to look in, check in, and then seeing if there is any type of shift and then saying, okay, well, I have the option to do that, you know, when I'm down. I have the option to do that away from the mat. And that's what I love yoga. It teaches so many things on the mat that we can take away. And all these beautiful poses and everything that we do, you know, even a, a lovely simple pose like tree pose, it away from the mat means about grounding and about grounding down. Because if we're sort of all, you know, up in the clouds, we sort of don't have anywhere to base ourselves. And when the wind comes along, and when we talk about resilience, the wind comes along into the, to the leaves and the branches of the trees, the trees is going to topple over. So if we can really root down and ground down and, and be in the moment, be in the now, um, when that storm does come along, we're going to be able to get through. It's going to be okay. So that's a, that's, that's a little bit about yoga. I mean... Um, You've articulated I mean, you, that. You perf you've articulated that perfectly, Lisa. That's that's very well said. I mean, it's really getting that connection so you can ground yourself. And I think that's an awesome point to really finish up on because in society, I do believe that that's probably the the seed of a root of most challenges is people not connecting with themselves and grounding and recentering. If we can have young girls and women doing this from a young age, and you in these schools to help, um, it's just you know it creates a whole other world. So. I think we need to we need to get you in more schools doing what you're doing is really what I'm trying to say. <laughs> get you in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of people there's a lot of people out there, but we just need. Um, I mean the schools are starting to become a lot more open, which mm. is which is fantastic. And um, hopefully, yeah, with with Life School, we can just spread the message and um, just let them know that just try something. I mean, yoga is for all all shapes all sizes um all different levels so it's it welcomes everyone and and that's what we're and that's what and that's what we're, and that's what we're gonna do because you know what we don't have any more time <laughs> i i knew that this would be one of those uh, conversations Yay. that could go forever but we will be back lisa and myself will be back doing another show together i'll actually be in australia soon so we might even sneak in for a show then but until then please do continue to watch us every wednesday at 11 a.m on think tech hawaii the savvy chick show as well as you can see all the rest of the episodes on the think tech hawaii youtube account as well as SavvyChicks.tv. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Namaste.